Wow, not a Doom analysis video this time. This better be good, Pumpkin Man. Even if you're not into Serious Sam, this, I reckon, is a pretty interesting topic. The classic Serious Sam games are plagued with the same, somewhat game-breaking problem. The weapon slowdown bug. Here's what happens. After 4096 seconds of playtime, so around 1 hour and 8 minutes, some of your weapons appear to have their rate of fire slowed down. The following three weapons are affected. The laser gun, tommy gun, and flamethrower. One of the monsters is also affected by this bug. The biomech miner's rate of fire, on difficulties higher than easy at least, is also decreased. What's even more bizarre is that after another 4096 seconds, this bug suddenly disappears. What the heck is going on? Well, thankfully the Sirius engine became open source some years ago, so we can take a look how everything works under the hood. This video will document my approach to figuring out what causes the bug, and also a potential solution. My first thought was an internal timer overflowing of some sorts. The fact that the bug starts at 4096 seconds of playtime and restores itself again at 8192 seemed too obvious. Problem is, there is no such integer type with those limitations. Having a range from minus 4096 to 4095 would mean the number is assigned 13 bit integer, which is nonsensical. Alright, so it's not that simple. Let's look for a common denominator among the weapons and monster affected by the slowdown bug. The only thing I could find was the frequency of shots. Each affected entity waits 100 milliseconds before firing the next shot, which adds up to 600 shots per minute. Maybe something goes wrong with the wait function? Let's see how that works. In simple terms, a timer is created with a time goal set. When the timer exceeds the goal, the script will continue. Serious Sam's engine runs at 20 ticks per second, so every 50 milliseconds the game will process all the logic. A floating point value is used to track the amount of seconds spent in game, so every process tick adds 0.05 to the current tick variable. This tick value is set to 0 when you start a new game or level and will continue ticking throughout the entire game. Even when you quit the game and load up a save, it will remember the session's last tick value. Pausing the game will pause the timer. The same floating point value is used for timers to check if the time goal has been reached. And then it hit me. That's probably what's causing the bug. Floating point imprecision. If you're unfamiliar what floating point values are, it's basically a way for computers to represent a fractional number. I'm not going to explain how exactly the computer translates this into an actual fractional number, as it's beyond the scope of this video. But let's just say that 32 bits is far from enough to retain accuracy. You can easily spot this yourself. Write a program that prints and increments a float value every 0.1 steps. As you can see here, it's not exactly 7.1 or 7.2. There's some fractional data loss, but it's still a very close approximation to the intended value. This, unfortunately, is a limitation on how floating point variables work. The further you stray away from zero, the less precise it becomes. There's also a certain pattern where the precision loss is very notable due to the binary format used. So let's take a look at Serious M again. We fire a shot with the laser gun on this tick. The timer is told to wait 100 milliseconds, but the goal will be set to the current tick plus 0.1. The game advances to the next tick of the 50 milliseconds and checks if the timer reached its goal. The current tick is this value, so not yet. Advancing to the next tick once again. And now the current tick, plus its epsilon, does surpass its goal. The epsilon is given to the current tick here to ensure it surpasses its goal by a small fraction. This all works fine, the laser will be shot every alternating tick. Now let's try with a tick value beyond 4096. We fire a laser on the stick right here. And the goal will be set to 100 milliseconds later. Advance 50 milliseconds and check the goal. Didn't reach it yet, so advance to the next stick again. 
now the current tick is at this value, we should reach the goal at this point, right? Well, we would if it weren't for the floating point precision loss. Even the Epsilon's push will not help it reach its goal. Oh no, that means we need to advance another 50 milliseconds again. Well, obviously the goal is reached now, but that means the next shot was one tick or 50 milliseconds later than usual. And that's what's causing the weapon slowdown bug. Instead of shooting every 100 milliseconds, it will be 150 milliseconds, a 67% decrease in speed. What about the bug fixing itself after another 4096 seconds? Remember that graph that I showed with the precision loss pattern? The bug occurs here in range 4096 to 8192. This isn't the only instance this bug kicks in. At range 65536 to 131072, it will happen again. That is 18 hours of playtime, which isn't too unrealistic if you're going through the entire game at a normal pace. The bug will happen for a third time at tick 1,048,576, which translates to 292 hours of playtime. But then you're really taking your sweetest time with your Series 7 campaign, she's Louise. Yep, the ranges are multiplied by 16 each time. Again, a side effect of how floating point values are represented in binary. By the way, if you're curious about the minigun, which clearly has the highest firing rate of any weapon or monster, the reason it is not affected by the bug is because it never has to call any timers before firing its next shot. It is bound to the tick rate of 20, so 20 shots per second. So, what could Crow Team, or you, do to fix this bug? I'm aware Series M Revolution fixed this bug already, but we don't talk about that mess. It's actually a really easy fix. The Epsilon value is too small, that's all. How about we set it to 0.04, a value slightly smaller than the smallest possible unit of time in the series engine. Whenever there's a rounding error, that Epsilon will ensure the push for it to surpass the timer goal. It's a relatively easy fix for a fairly annoying bug, so Crow Team, if you're watching this, it would be awesome if you could patch the Steam versions with this fix. If Crow Team doesn't, you could always do it yourself, like I said, it's open source and, for real, props to Crow Team. The code is really easy to understand, and I also managed to successfully compile it within 2 minutes after cloning it from GitHub. So yeah, great job Crow Team, legit. Be aware that if you patch your Series M by yourself, you probably won't be able to play multiplayer without a desyncing or something. I honestly haven't fully tested this bug fix myself either, so again, do it at your own risk. If you have no idea how to compile stuff, you could always edit the Epsilon through a hex editor. Go to your Series M folder, open up bin, and open engine.dll with your favorite hex editor. Assuming this is the latest Steam version as of this video, go to this address for the first encounter, and this one for the second encounter. Now change these four bytes, which represent the Epsilon 0.0001 in hexadecimal, to this, which is 0.04. This will fix the weapon slowdown bug, but again, do this at your own risk. If this messes up your game, simply verify the integrity of your game files through Steam and you're all good. A bit of an unusual analysis video this month, but I still hope you found this one interesting, even if you don't play Series M. Thank you for watching, as always, a special thank you to the YouTube members and Patrons for the support, and shoutouts to my favorite Turbo Nerds, 19 Day, Agonizing Rectal Pain, Andrew Dunai, Andrew Riss, Andrew Yukumchuk, Andri Dicklin, aka Muckhauser, Anthony Sicko, Art Cox, Beaks Make Me Coom, Ben Langley, Big Mac Davis, Bitcore, Blue, Thunderstorm, Kappa Bitch, Carlton Hart, Chief Kotrake, Choose Your Fights, Cyprian Rusen, Francis T218, James Young, John Guy, Joseph Shans, Katsune Teku, Kirill Gorobets, Matthias Sippert, Max Payne 67, Mr. Cheron, Neko Ninja Core, Nighthawk 71, P Pete Peterson, Pix Drift, Pyro Shi, Quake Gamer 632, Raven King, Ryan Quinn, Riley, Robert Wakeley, Salt Bad Guy, Shane Larson, Shazarat, Space Duck, Spectre, Stake Jacobs, Stephen Bone, Stephen Halustic, Teko Kami, The Hellwalker, Thomas, Tim Gerasimov, Tim Goldberg, Timothy Collar, Turbine2K5, Victor Rick, Who's Ace, and Zach Booker. 
Have a beautiful day. See ya.